Hello, and thank you for watching this video. And my name is Hema Medina, and I'm speaking from Eindhoven in the Netherlands, uh, where I live and work as an art historian, curator, and educator. And uh, today I'm pretty happy because we have the opportunity to, to have a conversation with Adin, a member of the collective Hysteria. Uh, that is the collective uh, that is based in Zemarang uh, in Indonesia. And uh, that in 2014, 15, I think, uh, had a collaboration with Husha Idi with the project uh, Pekka Kota. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing well, but <laughs> I will try my best. Uh, so Husha Idi is um, a tool, uh, uh, platform initiated by Juliana, uh, Juliana Rotic and David Kovia in 2008, which is part of the Arte Util archive. So first, thank you, Adin, for agreeing yeah. to having this interview with us. Yeah, and thank you. Um, I would like you first to ask you if you can just introduce yourself to break the ice. Okay. My, hello, my name is Adin and I am from Semarang and I am uh, part of the co-founder of Historia Collective. It's, it is an uh, artist collective that uh, uh, exists since 2004 so in this day we uh, we have like a seven year 17 years old now and we work in Semarang Semarang is the capital city of central Java Java is the main one of the main island in Indonesia it's a big island and Semarang it's also a big island too the capital city of central Java uh, the province and uh, we do this initiate i mean the art activity because of course we love it and my institutional background our educational background is i'm from uh literature department uh from my bachelor and my magister in Ur uh, urban anthropology in indonesia university and since 2004 we create a zine or a zine. It's an independent, uh, independent print maker, and spreading this information about our activity through the zine. And we rent a house in Smarang, small house, and we we are using this house to do many activity like uh, performances, workshop, screening movie, uh, exhibition, and etc and also we create kampung network in semarang not only in rural area but also in urban area in the coastal area and also in the hills and also uh, in the in the uh, small village surrounding semarang city so our our history with ushaiti it's uh, start when the city uh, have a contract with Rockefeller Foundation as a part of 100 Resilient City, the, pro the, the, the program that initiated by Rockefeller. And Semarang is the only one at the moment uh, becoming part of this network. So in terms of program itself, one of the program is uh, initiated by Usaidi because Usaidi is part of this program too. And uh, when the representative come to Semarang, this, this saw some of the mural that initiated by us in the, uh, in the street and Shadrock, his name, saw that one of the mural is uh, initiated by us and then sending us a uh, message and trying to reach us and to talk about uh, do you do you uh, interest in participatory mapping or something like that before that we know which i do from my friend because some of my friend is using it at 2012 or 2013 i, I think but not really really into it because uh, there is no uh, no one that's uh, introducing us to using it but when the 
Usaidi come to us and talk about the possibility to do online mapping and then we're we're uh, fast respond and saying yes we we want to do it because before we do the mapping online we we do the mapping offline because it is part of our activity in kampung uh, for the information semarang in in term of art scene or art world in indonesia it's not a, a mainstream city that's always related with the art thing because it's always Jogja, Bandung, and Jakarta that's that's telling us that that's the capital art of Indonesia. Semarang and also the small cities in Indonesia maybe not so lucky to be part of this art scene in terms of uh, art world today. So it is very hard to find gallery or museum here. We we just have one gallery since 2000 until now, uh, Semarang Contemporary Art Gallery. And we don't have news, uh, art museum here. We have historical museum, but not art museum. And we just have like a art institution, uh, educational in univer un, uh, Universitas Negeri Semarang. It's like a, uh, Semarang University. They have uh, art department only that so it is very rare to see performances or uh, exhibition from contemporary artists in here but we have network in this three big city in art and always have a uh, reference and sometime in the past we want to be like that because we saw that maybe this ideal thing it's becoming like that, but we realized that the material culture it's very different. So since 2012, we try to dig more and uh, try to find another way to to become more relevant and also part of the city itself. Because if we if we look back when we initiate many projects, sometimes it's not really really related with the city and also very difficult to find a financial institution that support us in terms of doing this art initiative in Semarang. It's very hard. We, we, since 2004 until 2016, we can say that 60, 100% our income is not from art thing. It's always from, yes, I, I work as crime journalist, and some of my friends work in the electricity uh, corporate. And yeah, we, we try to uh, find our solution to get financial income. But art is very difficult. So yeah, so if we, if we just rely on, rely on art itself, I think it's, it's going to be uh not good reason why why we why we still do that i mean it is it is harmful for our mental health issue i mean <laughs> so we need to find another reason that's why we still do that and when we learn more about the city and then we decide to okay let's do this for the city and also for us because uh, anything that's happened to the city, it's always going back to us. So whether you care or not, you're part of the city, and we 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 choose to be part of the inspiration or solution for the city problem. So that's our start to be more uh, improving this art engagement and so on. And we started by uh, researching in small area, and uh, we have a special uh, biennale, and we we call this biennale. It's a site-specific art project biennale, so it's very specific area, like a one hectare 
or it's very small neighborhood and we are using this issue and try to uh, relate it with the 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 people that live there and also connect connecting to the uh, wider issue like uh, uh, climate change and also migration urbanization and so on okay so i was wondering i mean it seems to me that it's very connected with your own practice in this question but uh, i would like to know more about how you feel uh, with the idea of art becoming a tool for social transformation then can you repeat it sorry i was wondering then how do you feel about the idea of of art becoming a tool of social transformation that i think that it's very connected yeah, 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 with your course, practice because, yeah 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 uh, we saw that one of the 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 opportunity when we 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 using art is a uh, art it have a capacity to gathering people art can attracting people that's the strong uh, power of the art and you know if we people gather around and then talk each other and then for us it's like uh, to maintaining the glue for the social solidarity for the society itself and for the first time we do not talk about the problem itself but the because sometimes art it's a uh, part of the uh what you call it like um, run from the reality or just having fun or i don't know i mean sometimes we, when we talk about uh, what the what the what the problem and everything becoming problem but if we if we attract people to to come around and then uh, have fun together and then we can get their trust and after that we know their life is not very uh i mean not not really really okay i mean there's a problem of course and then we're facing the problem and we know this capacity and and through all this network and also the capacity of using art to make a better uh, bonding with the people and also uh, advocating our interests. Like uh, we know that the city is uh, building by, not uh, usually building by the government, also technocracy. We know that participation of urban planning is regulated by the law but in terms of uh, implementation we saw that there is many cases that we know that people not really really into in this urban urban planning so when we try to attracting people through the art and gathering and becoming mass gathering and we talk about the problem itself and talk to the media we can amplify the issue to the broader context or the or the wider context in terms of city or in terms of uh country maybe we don't know like uh when we we, we talk it for example when we talk about uh Kemijen. Kemijen it's a small kampung in uh, in the coastal area they have the problem about the floating tides every day every day they have a flooding tides and and also the rock or or what you rock? the flood the flood itself when they when in the rain season they have flood and in the in the dry season they have uh, tidal waves so every day is very stressful but so many approachment to solving this problem but not really really into the problem itself 
it's just like a beautification of the kampung itself, but not related into the problem itself. And at the moment, we are using this festival to inviting this mayor of the city and negotiating that you need to build like a border, you know, border, right? Because the border itself, uh, it's becoming part of the commitment for the from the government since 2009, but not realize it until 2016, maybe. So people get angry and people get unsatisfied uh, with, with this government and want to do demonstration, but we can uh, uh, we, we, we can talk with the community and then uh, let's try another way. Let's try with the festival. The festival is not only to gathering people, but also talking the real issue. So if you want to uh, gathering people, you just inviting some of the artists and also the 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 mu the band music and and etc. And people will come. But we need to dig more about this problem. And we have collaboration with the Unisola University. It's a uh, one of the university in Semarang, and we create like a panelist discussion discussion for the for the issue itself, not only about the flooding, but also the future of kampung and so on. And we are using the front yard of the people or or uh, public spaces that exist in the village or kampung to do this seminar. Yeah, it's very rare. I mean, normally people doing seminar or discuss uh, paneling discussion in the in the building in or in the university. But we bring this to the kampung itself so people can hear and speak by themselves and sh maybe shouting to the uh, stakeholder like a mayor of the city. And etc. That's that's a good thing when we do this. After that, one year later, they build the polder in that place. Yeah. I mean, yeah, of course, it's not only us. This is happened, but I believe all this they happen because our intervention with many networks that's working at the sites. And also when we when we are using Ushahidi as a tool at 2016 a 15 uh, we try to to uh, using this this tool to do mapping many things like a public spaces and uh, small groceries that you cannot find it in the google but you can find it in the uh, Open street map and also Ushahidi platform, but yeah, you know it's uh, it's a little bit embarrassing for me because when we we don't have any uh, money and then we cannot continue it. <laughs> well, but actually, what is I would say that that's one of the main problems with these kind of activities, right? That then you just uh, you know like the funding body that they started maybe you don't know, leave and it's very difficult to continue but how it worked i mean how uh, was the participation what um what do you did you go through the city asking people to join and using the tool or how did you do the how do you use society and open uh, maps open street maps? Uh, when, when when we are doing open street map we make a workshop of course and and after we do the workshop and then we go to the uh, people that reside in the village and confirming that this is the the real uh, map i mean they they get involved in this mapping uh in this mapping activity so some of our trainer come to the society and then collaborating with this with these people to, to do mapping. But you know the problem for the 
online platform or uh, application is uh, how to make this fame. I mean, if it's not fame, then people will not download it and using it. And at the moment, we don't have any budget to do that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's it's separate project. I mean, sometimes our our uh, foundation just give us money for the to the initiate the project, but we do, we don't have any money to make this more common to the people. Like, uh, you need time to make this more. Uh, frames or people will using it because they love it and yeah and it's and it's very different uh, with the kenya case i mean in nairobi case with with uh, uh if we compare with uh, in samarang case hmm. so to be honest it's it's still not very common from people in here but uh we just have like a small actor that live in the kampung, but not really, really, uh, not not so, not so much, uh, yeah, not so much people that uh, uh, willing to using it. That's our problem. But the the good thing is because. Our activity, not only using OSHID, but also using this art of part of our movement. And in terms of our collective, it's become more famous and also the government recognizing us and we they and they uh, sometimes they inviting us when they have uh, planning for the environmental or neighborhood issue to be developed in the future. And also the inviting us in another issue like uh, uh, environmental issue or industrial issue or urban housing or, or something like that. Mm. So we, we, we see that we as small community becoming uh, significant in terms of uh, influencing the city itself. And after the the project at Kemijan 2016, uh, we saw that the government even maybe they didn't uh, what you call it admit it. We know that this project is uh, inspired by us. We can we can we can uh, give a good RQ about about that because because before that not many artist collective or community that going into kampung itself before government have many projects with the kampung and painting all this kampung and also make beautification for the kampung. We do this since 2013. And 2016, the part of this uh, conversation. And after that, there is a project, they name it, Kampung Tematik. Kampung Tematik is a project initiated by government to give some money for the kampung to improve their self. But my critical uh, preview is uh, this project is very in the surface area. It's only painting and building something, not building the social structure. The social structure it's very important for us by managing these performances or a festival or something like that we can show 
how many actor that willing to help us and building society if we do not have a, a good actor and everything is gonna be not good i mean it's not going long stand the the problem is the actor itself if you can identify the good actor in the community and we believe this investment becoming more sustained because we believe that special actor it's always people yeah. and building actor and building social network it is very hard to uh, get support from the government because it's not something that you can see like when you build the park build the building or build the road build the canal or something like that it is very you know building people is not it's not we can see we, we cannot see it by uh, our our eyes in the directly but we can see if we if, if we know the how many activity that happen after you have a good partner to do that that's our concern too about the the building the social network and also social structure